Hello and welcome to another podcast episode from the Daily Weekly Podcast. I'm joined today by Natasha and Bradley and seeing as it is the spooky season we thought we would go through some of our most beloved and also most hated horror Halloween-y kind of films. We thought we would compare the originals to the remakes using stats, facts and our own opinions. So... juicy one now because there's lots of different areas to cover we're going to be talking about it or as natasha said earlier it i love it what's it um something i can't do i'm not very good at that's why bradley edits my videos so technology everybody has heard of this stephen king classic uh but did you know that it came out as a mini series it had two 90 minute episodes in 1990 which aired on abc you didn't know that. You didn't know that. Mm, no. no. I prefer the newer uh, It's, by the way, just to put yes, it out there. Yes, I think most Both people, of them. I think most people do. Mm. Uh, so the original starred Tim Curry as Pennywise, and a lot of the children have gone on to become famous actors now. Um, it did... I couldn't find, obviously, like, box office, because it was a miniseries, but it got 30 million viewers over its two-night premiere. Part one was the fifth highest rated programme of the week. Um, and part two was the second highest rated programme of the week. So they were people like really... And this was before you could record stuff and watch it yeah. on demand. So you had to sit there and actually like actively think, oh, I want to watch this. Yeah. Mm. Can you imagine times like that? No. <laughs> My cousins have <laughs> Nothing no Nothing's on demand back then, you know. But no. then I also suppose there's less TV channels back then. So... Maybe people didn't have as many options. options. Yeah. Mm. What was quite interesting when researching, though, is that both part one and chapter one, respectively, gained so much praise for the way the children uh, actors acted, basically. They received a lot of praise for how mature they were and how they managed to convey that horror so well at such a young age but then both part two and chapter two were criticized for their adult actor Interesting. adult actors and how they didn't oh, really? quite encapsulate it there was a theory that the adult actors had too much of an idea of what was going on whereas the children sort of went into it a bit naively it was a bit of a ignorance is bliss sort of thing yeah um exactly which, yeah they didn't too young yeah, really so think the children about were, the magnitude of it. Yeah, so I suppose the children were almost responding organically to seeing this scary ghost, yeah. kind of like, kind of like Harry Potter. It's very yes. organic, isn't it? They didn't really know what they like Harry and Daniel Radcliffe. He didn't really know it was going to be that big of a thing. So yeah. he was just a kid having fun. That's yeah. the beauty of kids in in um, they're just playing a game. Yeah, it's like play playing. Isn't it's it? like role play. Yeah, yeah they exactly. don't play. It's like when you play mummies and daddies. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They don't realise. And both... So it gives a more organic feel. Definitely. And the 1990 and the modern day versions have both been criticised for being too long. Um, but it is... The original miniseries is said to be the best Stephen King miniseries oh, really? out there. Yeah. Um, I suppose for its time. Um, I mean, it, this came out before Shawshank Redemption, before... I want to say before Carrie, uh, maybe even before Cujo, so before a lot of the Stephen King films really came out. Mm. And it has got a 5.59 rating out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. You said that at the wow. same time. Wow. Yes. The, um, do you know, I saw part of the newer ones, I saw part two before part one, so we were going to the cinema to see it, mm. and I was like, do I need to have seen part one? And you don't really need to have seen part one to understand part two, because it flashes back. Yeah. So, I was never confused. Yeah. Like, A Quiet Place 2, you'd need to have watched A Quiet Place 1 to understand yeah. what was going on, but for... It, I didn't need to. But no. I have watched number one now. I've, I watched number one at home and then I saw chapter two in the cinema and it was just the most amazing I, thing. Really I haven't seen chapter two, but I did watch chapter one in the cinema. I forgot the I guy who plays it. That was it. the cinema thing. I did I tell you that recently? Was that you two? No, who's our cinema tell? thing? What cinema thing? About the tickets. Oh, you couldn't get in? Yeah. Yes, yes, that was our experience. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that was Thursday, yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. (laughs) Yeah. 
The, I do yeah. remember you t- yeah, telling us about that. Yeah, so even though Bradley got kicked out, um, <laughs> at the box office it made £701.8 million. That's its chapter wow. one. Which is an insane amount of money. That's the highest thingy so I far, I think it, it is, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know if you remember, there was so much hype around it. It came out when we were, like, 16, 17. So it was very much like, oh, you've got to come see it. You've got to come yeah. see it. it yeah. Was, it was a big thing. It was it? such a like, big thing. I think that was probably the biggest... I mean, uh, the biggest horror film for our generation to go yes. and see oh, brand definitely. Oh, definitely. Oh, my yeah. gosh, yeah. The, the actor who plays it... it is incredible. Bill yeah. Skarsgård. Yeah. Is that his name? He's yes. He's amazing. He, he I said here again the child actors were heavily praised, particularly Bill Skarsgård. I know he's not a child, but he plays Pennywise, so yeah. he has to have sort of childlike role. Um and oh, I said here it set the record for the highest grossing R rated film of all time. Wow. Yeah, it beat, beat Deadpool, Deadpool. Yeah. and it was the highest grossing horror film of all time, beating Hannibal made in two thousand and one. It broke so many other records, those were just the two that I wrote down. I found them the most 7. interesting. Seven point two out of ten on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty that's high. Very, like, that's the highest, isn't it, that we've had yeah. so far? However, we then have chapter two, which was the 2019 sequel. Loved it. Sequel or part two? I mm. I loved. I, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was and I think amazing. they chose the perfect people for the I kids. The casting was pretty the, good. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah I think because the older woman, the ginger one, I forget names. I'm really bad at names, yeah. but they look exactly the same. Yeah, they look. It looks like she's her oh growing up. Yeah, I mean it, that. I thought it was really good, but again, it sort of. Was no it one likes the down sequel. F- it, it's not even a sequel, it's the part two. It's oh, like yeah. the what happens next. Um, yeah, I mean, it got very mixed reviews. Basically, everyone was like, it's a good film, but not as good as chapter one. I suppose some people saw it as a disappointment in comparison. I think it was on par. I think it was... I think it was good. Yeah, really I thought it was good. really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the re- <laughs> We haven't actually said why it looks like it was a disappointment. So it got... Uh, in the box office, it got $473.1 million, um, and the Rotten Tomatoes rating is 6.1 out of 10. Um, so it's not bad, but when you look at the no, 701.8 yeah. million... What, less than three quarters of yeah. what they got on Yeah, the first one. In saying that, though, it was number one for three weeks, and on its third week, it was knocked off the top spot by Downton Abbey the movie. What a blow. <laughs> really? I thought I'd put that in there because I went to go see Downton Abbey the movie and it's in cinemas. Never seen it but my sister loves Downton Abbey. It's got a Downton Abbey jigsaw puzzle at home but it's oh. never been opened. I just love period <laughs> dramas. So do I. I reckon I'd like it. I've just never seen it. Mm. Have nice. you watched Call the Midwife? <laughs> of course, yes. yeah. Of course, I'm yeah. binging it at the moment. My favourite episode... Oh, have you seen all of I'm on series three. My favourite episode is the one with you know where she steals the baby. She, she oh the Irish her girl. Baby. Yeah. So she's, oh so she's yeah, still. no, that's like series one. That's, that's pretty really early. Sad, yeah. Oh, you need to get that's into my favourite episode. Wife. Okay, on to our next one. This is going to be a bit of a long episode. Um, <laughs> we have got the witches, the sequel of which came out fairly recently. Roll Do you yeah, I suppose I better chip in and do a bit. Well, of... we better remember that you're here. <laughs> yeah. Those that aren't watching are like, "Where's Bradley gone?" <laughs> the, um, I'm still here. You know, Roald Dahl didn't condone. Um... I was just about to say that it's off right now. I've got it on it. I'll shut up. Wait for it. Go on, Bradley. I'll just be quiet. Okay, while well, they take a sip of their drink. <laughs> so, The Witches was released in 1990 and then 2020. The 1990- <laughs> 1990. <laughs> I, I was about to rip I it don't out. I think they could even hear me. <laughs> the 1990 box. The 19. Blah, blah. <sighs> the 1990 box office was 15.3 million. What? That's very low for a 90s movie. Yeah, that is very low. That's, that's bad. That shocks me because. I was terrified of the witches. I absolutely, absolutely scared me. Absolutely. Really? That was, oh my yeah. God, it gave me nightmares. Mm-hmm, me too. Wow. But I'll go Hated to the cinema it. to watch both hits. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, it... That was, I yeah, no, yeah, that absolutely messed sleep. me up. Mm. Because it's, I think it's because it's normal. My mum used to tell me as a kid that she was the witch. 
she was actually a witch. My mum told me that it was my nan. And I always thought my <laughs> mother. I always thought my dad. <laughs> I always thought my dad was an elf because he has quite pointy ears. I thought my dad was an elf and my mum was a witch. So when witches came out, I was like, my mum's a witch. Uh-huh. No, I Just didn't. Oh my skin. god, I can't even think about it now. Honestly. The bit where they pin the boy down to give him that medicine. My mum was like. I'm going to do that to you if you don't take your medicine. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, yeah, that's scary, isn't it? That's... That part. No. No. Anyway, we're not fucking talking about that. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> but, yeah, despite its low box office numbers, the Rotten Tomatoes rating was 7.55 out of 10, which is Ooh. fairly high. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Maybe it isn't that, the, that is the highest. Uh, oh, I have got it all in ratings, don't worry. I was in... Oh. I, I have got it in order at the bottom of the page. Okay. Um... Yeah, so I, that kind of lends itself to the point that films might not do well when they go into the cinema, but years later... Yeah, they sort of become popular. like classics, yeah. don't they? I mean, this was a film we were all raised on as Naughties Kids. Yeah. I was, yeah. We're not 90s kids, but we... We're Naughties we're, kids. Yeah, so yeah. we get... But, but yeah. that's kind of... I feel like whenever you say only 90s kids will remember, no, like... Early, the, early, the early thousands. Mm. You love saying noughties. Noughties. Well, the we were two thousand thousands. and two thousand and one. I think. Yeah. We're not nineties kids by like official, but like we, we, we have grew the up same experience, very, very yeah. similar, similar time. Yeah. 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 Anyway, press on. <laughs> Sorry, we got on tangent. So, although a critical success and viewers seemed to love it, Roldo was utterly appalled at how they changed the ending without telling him. Doll was incensed. Is that incensed? Incensed. Incensed. I don't think I've seen that word written down before. You learn something every day. Uh, was incensed that Rogue, r- Rogue had to change his original Do you ending. want your reading classes, babe? <laughs> In the script, as a gesture of conciliation, Rogue offered to film two versions before he made the, his final choice. The book version where Luke remains a mouse and the happier version where he was transformed back into a human. Upon watching the scene... Loyal to his book, Dahl was so moved that he brought, it was brought to tears. So obviously Roald Dahl wanted the same ending that was in the book, which is where Luke stays as a mouse. mouse. It's such a... It's, that's a good ending, I think. Wow. But you think he's going to stay as a mouse in the film, and then all of a sudden he doesn't. And that good witch comes along. Well, Sorry, Bradley's about to spill the tea. <laughs> spill the tea? Rogue. However... However, Rogue decided to go with the changed ending, which led Dahl to demand that his name be removed entirely from the film's credits and threaten a publicity campaign against the film. He was only dissuaded from this on the urging of Jim Henson. What did Jim Henson right. have to do with this? Let's talk about Roald Dahl for two seconds. Do you know who Jim Henson is? I can't remember. As a writer, I love Roald Dahl. As a person, in the film and, you know, the industry, he was... And I'm not going to say the word, but the word that my mum doesn't like me to say. He was that. Your favourite word. Okay? Not a very nice guy. Begins he was not a very nice guy. Yeah, it doesn't really see. Front. <laughs> was exactly. he rather selfish? He, so, <laughs> did you know he didn't like the um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory yeah. uh, film either? And he also said he never wanted them to ever make a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film again. He died and his production team said, yeah, go go for it, make it. Yeah. And that's when they made the Johnny Depp bomb. And they made yeah. the Johnny Depp bomb. Oh. So he's probably turning in his grave with anger. But then... But, sod him. When you've written a book and when you... I mean, I think Roald Dahl is a brilliant, brilliant Brilliant. Human. Brilliant writer. Yeah. I, okay, brilliant writer. I'll, I'll level with you there. I mean, he's changed his so many... His mind is brilliant. His mind is brilliant. He's inspired so many children in so many generations. And he is still my go-to author when I teach oh, yeah. how to read. Yeah. Like, I... You know, even with, like, um, children who don't have their first language as English, I will turn to Roald Dahl mm. to teach them he's English. He's And he's... So, I can understand just... why he's so... He's very picky. He's just he's a very picky, picky guy. And he's like, this is my mind. It's going to go the way I want. This is my world that I created. And I completely get that. Perhaps yeah. he should have been more involved. He Do you was. Not think? What was his... What, what did he involve? Sorry, what? More involved in the film, filming yeah. and things. No, I suppose he was, though. But shouldn't you be, like, so happy that someone wants to take your idea and make it into a massive Hollywood film? Mm. But, but he s- wasn't. But I suppose he would have been quite content with just keeping I his think, books. I think... I don't think he would have. Do you know I think? don't think he was a money grabber. Do you know what I think? No. Very humble beginnings. He I did, thought. yeah. But I just think that... I don't know. The, the fact that he never liked any of his 
any of the films that were made from his books. He's not like Denny. Just doesn't sit right. But then, you know when um, big fans of books go and watch the movie adaptation, they're like, actually, that was not what I had in my head. Mm. Maybe that's the exact same as he feels. Yeah, true. Like Hunger Games. I've read the books and... Yes, it's similar, but there's bits in it that I'm like, if that was in the movie, it would have made so much more sense. There's like bits in the film, that, bits in the book that add to Peter and Katniss's kind of relationship mm. and Prim as well. Yeah. But they don't put that in the film, so it no. just doesn't. Yeah, well, that's the only yeah, thing I, I can do think. get what you mean, yeah. Um, She's like so angry because I'm trying to trash Roald Dahl. Because I love Roald Dahl. No, Roald so Dahl do I. and David Williams are like my oh, favourite children's authors. Uh, David Williams is um, inspired by Roald Dahl. Yes, He's got the same... Exactly. Quentin Blake. Yes, same Quentin Blake illustrator. Same illustrator, yeah. Yeah, those are my two go-tos. When If you're at home and you've got reluctant readers like Bradley, give them a David Williams or a Roald Dahl. And they will Honestly, start reading. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna give you my Royal Doll collection. <laughs> I've got um, I've got Gangster Granny. My um, granny I've got the boy that. in the dress as well. My granny bought me Gangster Granny. I love she the boy in the dress. It. Was it I Gangster love Granny? All good one. They've made them. a film out of it as well. Yeah, no, I want to read some of his new books, but I haven't got the balls to go into a bookshop and buy kids' books for myself. Hmm. Uh, okay, on to our next one, which is very controversial. Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock, Psycho. Uh, so, obviously, Alfred Hitchcock's version came out in 1960, and then the remake, which was a bit of a shot-by-shot -shot experiment by the director, I can't remember his name, um, came out in 1998, starred Vince Vaughn, Julianne Moore, I think it was Julianne Moore, um, but really big names, but it just did not do good. So, what did it get at the box office, guys? I feel like I talk too much. Well, the 1960 version made 50 million at the box office. That's a lot of money in 1960. Oh, no. Yeah. 50 million, wow. And the Rotten Tomatoes rating for that film was 9.2 oh, out of wow. 10. Wow. Have you seen Psycho? Interesting. Have not. I haven't. It is, you've got to watch it. it what, the 1960 version? Yeah. Is it, it is amazing. White? Yeah. Okay. It's incredible. Really? It's, it's so, I cannot fault it whatsoever. The 1998 one, however, shot by shot, so they literally like copied the lines, copied the shots, copied the scenery. But it so it was basically the same, the same but in colour, but in colour, yeah, and more appealing to yeah. RJ. Norman <laughs> tried to be, and Norman Bates was played by Vince Vaughn. I think Carrie Fisher was in it, or someone who looks really similar to her. I can't remember now. Um, but no, it was had loads of big names to try and appeal to the young generation, and it didn't work. Everyone just preferred the 1960 version. Mm. Um, and this is proven, because what did the 1998 one make at the box office? 37.2 million. Wow! <laughs> Isn't that a bit so, of a stab in the back? 38 years later, and it didn't even make the same... No, that's so a body slam, isn't it? <laughs> just a little bit. That's a significant drop. Thinking about again inflation. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And Psycho, the original, changed cinema forever. It was. It was one of those film. It was one of the first films that people were like, "I have to go to the cinema to see this film." It changed cinema, and it changed. I'm sorry. I just read a quote. Uh, and it changed um, everything forever. Uh, oh, that's his name, Van Sant. Or Van Sant. I just can't the believe that the only reason to watch it was to see Anne Hetch being assassinated. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was that That's was what um, Camille, Camille Pag 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 Paglia said oh. in her review. Um, the only reason to watch it is to see Anne Hetch being assassinated. Um, it's a very very Brutal. poor remake. I I watched it on Netflix and it, even though it is done shot by shot, it's like a complete carbon copy it just didn't entice me as much as the original mm, mad. it's really really Different actors, odd maybe? yeah and there's something about it being in black and white that's just like Ooh, classic mm. yeah see i did it in order of racing there i love it <laughs> um okay so we've only got two more because we're not going to bother carrying pet cemetery okay so on to our next one texas chainsaw massacre never seen it <gasps> no. it's, it's no. another slasher we're very similar basically. in taste i feel like i think we are 
I could watch horror films all day. Um, <laughs> I say I love horrors. I've not seen half of these. No. So. <laughs> well, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, basically another slasher film like Friday the 13th or Halloween. First one came out in 1974. It did amazingly in 1974 for the time. It got point nine million. Is that point nine million dollars? Which in the seventies, bad, yeah, probably mm. pretty penny. Um, and it also oh. rated eight point one out of ten on Rotten Tomatoes. So That's another good. very very high score. I think it's just oh, the fact that it's another. Like you're gonna look it up in conversion. I'm conversion, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What? How much thirty point nine million is nowadays? Yeah. Yeah. So well, 1974. If you think now, uh, 2003, 107.4 million at the box office. That's that's a lot. But then you go to Rotten Tomatoes, and they've got a 4.8 out of 10 rating, which is I think lower it than was the in, than the original. I think it was another one of those films that had a really big hype. Mm. Like it was all. It always had like a cult following, um, because the original was such a classic that. Everyone probably ran out to the cinema to see it. Yeah. And absolutely. it just disappointed. Which is a shame, but it's not uncommon um, in remakes. Um, and there is a quote that I have. It says, The remake moves faster and sounds louder, but comes off as callous rather than creepy. So there's issues with the pacing, um, issues with... It was very controversial for all its violence in the 1970s, but our... Uh, are we too accustomed to this sort of thing in modern day? That's what we're saying. Yes. We're too, you know, like... So things like Psycho and Chainsaw, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre were so appalling and outrageous for their time because no one had ever really seen or done that yeah. before. However, <laughs> we now see murder all the damn time. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. It's because of... Yeah. It, it's not that there's more murder now. It's just... It's more we're like... Used to it. Yeah, it's more... There's media, do you know what I mean? And all yeah. that sort of stuff. So, and you think, this is the thing about horror films. Like, back then, you wouldn't hear about a lo like, you wouldn't hear about a murder across, like, Way. serial killer documentaries. That was That's thing. real, do you know yeah. what I mean? That's, that actually happens. But you wouldn't have heard about that years ago because of the media. Nowadays, we hear about it, so we're just like, yeah. When it comes to horror movies, uh, we're I've, like, that's happened in real, that's probably happened in real life, isn't I it? I feel like death Which, is very... I don't know, it seems very unpermanent. Yeah, to us, we're do you very know? like yeah disposable. We're very um uh desensitised to it. Yes. And mm. this is was an idea I had for a video and it was uh guess if the horror film was based on a real true story. <gasps> I was gonna do that. I wanna do that. Guess <laughs> guess that if the horror film was based on a true story because a lot of them are A lot are. of them are I'm gonna um, do that next time. Yeah. We'll do that for the Halloween thing. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> That was just something I've just remembered. Um, but yeah, no, there's, a a, there's a lot of... So, there is a lot of controversy. There was also a lot of controversy around Chucky. I didn't put this in the notes because I completely forgot. But basically, that was very controversial because it there was this theory that by watching a doll act violently, it made children act violently. And apparently, it, it, the film, the original Chucky Child's Play came out... Um, a couple of years before the James Bulger case happened. Do you know what happened in the James yeah. Bulger case? Do you know what happened? Yeah. So where the toddler got murdered by teenagers or kids, basically. And they think that that might have been linked to films like Chucky. Like, that really? would have influenced them. They, they're always trying to, like, they say... Pin it know, on stuff. Something yeah. Something like violence in video games, for example. It's normally yeah. mental health issues. Yeah, I mean... This is, this is what I don't get. In the... Like, I can join the army at 16 and fire a rifle, but I can't buy uh, Call of Duty World War 3 or uh, World War 2 until I'm 18. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't no, really make much sense, do you know what I mean? No, no. But then, yeah, I, I suppose it is about a person's mental capacity and, like, yeah. if trust. There you go. There's a podcast you know, topic for another most, day. Laws um, that don't make sense. Most people, um, it's often online abuse and things like that. Like, uh, there was a guy who... Um, who murdered people because he was tr like told online he was influenced online and indoctrinated to believe that he should kind of like ISIS they use they do it mm. they wouldn't the Taliban they get online and try and convince people why it's important like are people are young people are impressionable and they're exposed more now yes. to this sort of thing mm. exactly you know? and that's the scary thing is that young people are so impressionable yeah um but I don't yeah. think James Bolger died because of Chucky. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I think yeah. James Bolger died because there were two 
mentally unwell children that thought there were very i remember my mum telling me about it as a kid because i wanted to watch chucky or see at a very young age because i've always been into like horror and scary stuff and she's like absolutely not you'll go and murder a toddler <laughs> it's like i don't think i will i think it was just they were mentally ill yeah they, they that is that the, the majority of um uh crimes Cases. are committed because of mental illness yes and um that mental illness is more well known about now, but it wasn't back then. So people were just like, let's find something to blame. Yeah, you know. No, I totally get it. And I know you said it wasn't that long ago. That's only like thirty-two years ago, thirty-three years yeah, ago. Yeah, Jane So not yeah. too bad. Did you work out how much? I it... did. I worked it out. So thirty point nine uh, million. Thirty point nine million in nineteen seventy-four. By two thousand and three, it was one hundred and fifteen million. Right. And by yeah. twenty twenty-one, it's one hundred and seventy-one million. <gasps> and how much is one hundred and seven million? Let's work it out. In today's money. Today's money. God, inflation. I know. And then we've only got one more and we're done. What was it? One more. Are we going to do a mukbang? Um, we, should we do a Domino's mukbang after? Seven. I don't know what we talk about. Anything. Let's have a good chat. Have a good bonus one. content. Bonus content, yeah. Uh, 159 million. Okay. So it still made less, no matter how, which way you compare yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so on to our final... Okay, so realistically, I said it made more, but actually it made less, so... Yeah. Mm. It was close, but yeah. Very yeah. close, yeah. Very, very interesting, though. I kind of want to do the same for all the other films, but it takes so long to do. <laughs> um, so our final one is The Ring. I didn't realise this. the 2002 version wasn't the original. So the American remake is based off of a Japanese original. Mm. It's also based off of Japanese novels. Um, oh. So the Japanese original came out in 1998. And it got $19.4 million at the box office, roughly translated, roughly converted, um, from whatever they use in Japan. And the Rotten Tomatoes rating was 7.5 out of 10. I think everyone's heard of The Ring. I feel like the American one was such a huge success. They remade it a few years ago, didn't they? Again? Did they? I think they did. I'm only comparing it to these two, but... Okay, just... Maybe, maybe. Just throwing it out there. I think they made one. I don't know. Within the last um, five years, I think. But no, the American one was a huge success. So bear in mind it only came out four years later. It earned 249.4 million at the box office and it got... Actually got a lower Rotten Tomatoes rating. The um the Ring is also very well known. Like, it's in... Uh, what's it? What's that film? Why that? Oh, S Scary Movie? Scary Movie. Yeah. It's in that, isn't it? I think so. It comes out on the telly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's in that, isn't it? Yeah, Scary movies. So it's very well known. It's the classic. Everyone, like even people who haven't seen The Ring, it's sort of girl had their hair flipped over. They'd be like, yeah. you look like the girl in The Ring, even though you've never seen it. Yeah. So I've not seen it, but I know First about it. First you watch it, then you die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So yeah, the American version got a 6.6 .6 out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, so it was... Box office, it was more successful, critically not so much, um, but it was one of the big films that paved the way for other Asian-American remakes like The Grudge, Dark Water, The Eye, other horrors like mm. that. So it was very much a uh, monumental piece of film in that sense. Um, and I have got a little quote here, it says, with little gore and a lot of creepy visuals, the ring gets under your skin. Ooh, so I, like I suppose it's more of like a psychological than yeah. that. Mm. So yeah, that is all we have. I just picked random ones. So on the top for order of rating, we have Psycho. Psycho had a nine point two out of ten. That was the nineteen best rated uh, horror on our list. Yeah, and it was yeah made in nineteen sixty. So that's quite then the worst. And that's also the oldest one we have. Yeah, sorry, God. The worst would be Friday the Thirteenth, two thousand and nine, with four point three out of ten. Yeah, oh, I had well. so much fun ordering these. You don't even understand. Hmm. I'm impressed, to be honest. But yeah. yeah. Well done, Rachel. Right. Well done. Into this episode. I really enjoyed it. Thanks yeah. for having me. I hope. <laughs> Thanks for having me on my own show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. nice to say a few lines. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. To something. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for listening. If you have, don't forget to let us know your favourite Halloween horror kind of films if you want to. Do you agree with these ratings that we have here or do you think...
That's disgusting. <laughs> Did you like that? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna shiver down my spine.